Welcome back to the final video for doing the HLA calls on the, the test data that we gave you. Now, as you remember, we were able to confidently call one of the alleles uh, the, um, from the exon 2 forward two consensus, is the A forward consensus. We're confident it belongs to B0710. We're not confident what the exon 2 forward B consensus leads us to. We have a hundred possible answers. And so the reason this is, is because we are only looking at the sequences which the parts of the, the gene which belong to exon 2 and exon 3. If you remember in an earlier video, we didn't look at the data which um, is intronic. And also HLA genes consist of more than two exons. The reason that we are just looking at two exons is because these two exons encode a very important part of the gene, which is for many people the part, the main part that they're interested in. And traditionally, this is the part that most people have called HLA alleles from, just these two exons. And the way that they deal with these large groups of potential alleles is that they have formed what they call G groups. And the G groups will say that when you see a large number of alleles, these, these ones all together, instead of saying, well, it's either going, it's going to be either 35010101 or 35010102 or blah, 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 or 100 times, they say it's going to be part, it's going to be one of the members of this group and they have a group which defines all of these. And you can see those groups within the, from the steps file that I gave you, there was a link to the groups. And so you can download the groups or you can view them, I'll, I'll download as an Excel. Takes a little time. So again, we're downloading this from the IMGT site, which is the gold standard for references for HLA. Opens up in Excel. Everything always takes twice as long when you're videoing it. Okay, so it starts off with a, a readme sheet, which I'll leave to you to read if you're interested. Uh, but we're interested in HLA-B. So if I click on the HLA-B tab, you can see that here are the HLA-B groups. There's a whole lot of them. And what we want to do is that we want to find where our potential alleles lie. So our potential alleles we had 35010, sorry, here, three times we had 35010101. So if I just copy that and search for it in here. There. So we see we have a group which is called B35010101. G, and that contains all of these alleles. And so hopefully you would see that if you look through this list here, which we have, you would see all the same alleles. Uh, the sorting won't be quite the same because we've done Excel sorting, which basically so sorts things in alphabetical order rather than numerical sorting. So you see that B3594 occurs at the end of our list, uh, whereas their, their list um, ends in B35473. So here's B35473 on our list here. 
So based on that, we can now call our allele as being B0710 from the A consensus plus B3501010 G. And that's the that's the call. And as you see, that's um, taken us a long time to interpret that data manually. But hopefully along the way, you've A, gained an appreciation for how much work the software does. And actually, the software does a lot more work than the way we did it, because we've done it a bit of a rough and ready way, which is susceptible to errors. But hopefully also, it has given you some insight in how you may be able to look at your sequencing data in the future and draw some conclusions as to how you want to analyze it or what may have gone wrong when you analyzed it by just clicking the the button on, on a piece of software thank you for listening and i hope this has been of value to you